Good day, everybody. Hi, I'm Steve Farrell with uh, Humanities Team, co-founder, uh, worldwide executive director, Humanities Team, and I'm coming to you live from our studio here in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, I'm, as you can see on screen here, I'm with uh, Suzanne Giesman. She's my guest. I'm going to give her a proper introduction in a moment, but uh, yeah, you want to just say hi here, Suzanne? Oh, All Steve, right. I'm so excited. The energy is already high. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. She's coming in live from, is it South Carolina? You're uh, from, from her home on the yes, East Coast. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Right. So this is a live program. So we want to uh, just shout out, first of all, to all of the friends of uh, Suzanne Giesman, uh, Humanities Team friends, Humanities Stream Plus members, the Sign Network, uh, John Raymer, all of the uh, sites that he's broadcasting to. So big shout out to you. Thank you for being here. We have an important, fun, really exciting hour in store for you. So stay with us here for the hour. Uh, so many important and uh, really fun things that we're going to get to. Uh, now, as a live program, you, uh, we do invite you to, on social media and chat. Just list the questions and comments that you have. The earlier in the hour, the better. Uh, I have right here in studio a big console, and those questions are being brought back to me so I can bring them right to Suzanne during the hour. Usually in the last half hour, we uh, get to those questions after we kind of set the stage here. Uh, but again, the sooner in the, uh, in the hour you bring questions to us, the more likely I can get to your questions. Okay, now our theme here today is partnering with universal beings. Partnering with universal beings. Uh, and there's so many things that we uh, want to tell you about. But uh, Suzanne reached out to me very early this morning and said, wow, Steve, you know, in the last few days, you wouldn't believe something happened that I'd like to bring in. I don't even know what it is yet myself, but uh, Suzanne, can you tell us what, what happened here that, uh, uh, that really sets the stage for this whole discussion? It really does set the stage, Steve, and I didn't realize as it was unfolding that it was a setup for this morning. The timing is just perfect because it's all about partnering with universal beings. And it's a silly example. <laughs> Yet I went for a bike ride after reaching out to you this morning early. And my team of universal beings kept flooding me with further insights about this. So I'm glad we have this opportunity to unfold it. So we are part of a team, not just our earthly team, but beings of light who help us. You can call them spirit guides, beings of light, universal beings, whatever you call them. They're non-physical, but they are very real, incredibly intelligent, and they have the bigger picture than we do from our limited perspective here. But we can expand our perspective by expanding our awareness like we do in meditation. So two days ago, I was sitting in this very room where I do my daily meditation, I get messages every day from my team of guides who I call Sanaya, but I do have a main spirit guide and I call him Boris. It's kind of funny, but that's what he told me to call him years ago. So I haven't chatted specifically with Boris in a while. And I asked him for a particular experience so I could feel him more clearly. And he gave me a wonderful experience. I don't need to go into that, but we did this repeatedly back and forth this sensation that he created. And when I was finished the meditation, I played a little game with him that I teach people to do all the time. In fact, a course that I have with you coming up in the future, I teach this very practice. I just said, Boris, I know this is you. That was a very real example, but I'd love for you to give me evidence that this was you. So in the next day or two, I'd like you to give me a sign to validate this experience of a now notice how I paused right there. The way the game actually works is because all thoughts come from one mind, something will pop into your mind when you say, I want you to give me a sign of a, uh, and it will sound just like your own thought. I know how, how this works, but I also know that the guides know what's coming down the path for you and they will put in your mind what to ask for. You get it? Yeah. Okay. So I said, Boris, I know this was you, but if it was you, I want you to put in my mind, I want you to put in my life in the next day or two, a sign of a watermelon. And the second watermelon came to mind, I laughed because I knew 
that was great. I had no reason to encounter a watermelon around here. We don't usually buy watermelons. My schedule is such that I wasn't planning to leave the house except to exercise in the next day or two. Not, no grocery shopping. So I'm, it's very unlikely I'm going to encounter a watermelon. I don't watch TV. So I got a little excited. This is going to be fun because it's always magical to see how it unfolds. Well, I got through the whole day. Was this just yesterday? No, it was two days ago. I got through the whole day, no watermelon sign. Now I'm starting to get a little disappointed. My human side is starting to say, did I make up that whole experience with Boris? But I know I didn't. But that's what happens. Ego gets in the way. So I had started reading a new book that day, and it was a pretty technical science-based book. And as I'm reading it, I'm aware I haven't got my watermelon sign. And I tuned in and I knew I was not going to find it in that book. So feeling a little disappointed because it's always fun when you get the sign in the first day. So it was after dinner and uncharacteristically, my husband Ty said, I didn't get to exercise today. I'm going for a walk before the sun sets. So off he went. And suddenly I had this thought, oh, if he's not here, maybe I'll just take a break and watch a little TV show on, my, on the internet. We just don't watch TV at all. So I pulled up uh, abc.com on my, on my computer and I'm browsing the shows and nothing looked interesting. And then suddenly I noticed the 2020 news program, never watch it, but it snagged me. And I teach about snags in my teaching. We know something just catches your attention. Now, I'm not thinking watermelon at all. I'm just thinking, oh, maybe there's something, some interesting news show. So I started watching it. Steve, I haven't watched 2020 in six, seven years, okay? I just don't watch it. So I start watching. In the first five minutes, they're talking about a murder mystery that took place right here in South Carolina. So that got my attention. Oh, great. I'm familiar with this story because it's unfolding not too far from here. So I start watching and they talk about the town where these murders took place, a town called Hampton, South Carolina. I never heard of it, but clearly it's near here because they're showing scenes of the low country, which is what they call this area. All of a sudden, this newspaper reporter from the town of Hampton says, well, y'all, if you lived here, you'd recognize Hampton for our watermelon festival <laughs> and flashes this big sign of the watermelon festival literally i went <gasps> just like this i just i gasped my whole body shuddered it was so in my face and then i had to back up a few minutes because i had to take a picture of this this was not a live tv show and then i noticed the town water tower has a watermelon picture on it so i took a picture of that then the newspaper reporter goes on. He says, yeah, we've been having the watermelon festival since 1939. And he starts showing news clips of the watermelon seed spitting contest. And I mean, it wasn't just a random watermelon, Steve. It's like being pummeled photo after photo after photo of watermelons. And by this time, I'm just laughing. I stopped the show. I sat. I shifted my focus to Boris. And I said, that is so cool. But how did that happen? You know, because I had no intention of watching 2020, but clearly I was being guided right to it without even realizing it. So we had a chat, he and I, in meditation the next day about how, and this is so deep, but it's what this, it's how we understand oneness that our guides and you and I, everyone at any level, all arises from one mind. And basically we are, we share that mind. That's the oneness it's shared consciousness. And so when I feel guided to watch a certain show, I call that I Suzanne, but really it's just the one mind saying, let's do this because magic's about to unfold. It's not magic at all. So yesterday, I wanted to celebrate this beautiful moment of being guided and having validation that that this this partnership with our guides of these universal beings is very very real and they will cooperate and guide us so unerringly to show us they're part of our lives so i needed to buy something with a watermelon on it 
because I love to have little reminders around me in this room here of magical moments. So I went to across the street. We have a bed, bath and beyond. I walked in and I said, what do you have with watermelons? And the lady looked at me. She started laughing. She said, we already put all our summer stuff away, but maybe in the candle section. So I go to the back, no watermelon candles. And I'm about to leave, but I hear, no, there's something here. So I walk around the corner and I found this. It's a, <laughs> it's a towel clip, but it's a watermelon thing, slice. So... Do you mind if I share the insights that came from please this? Please do now. Yeah, please okay. do. It's, it's really stunning. <sighs> My guides love to use metaphors and analogies. If Those of you watching are probably familiar with the aura. And it's, it's an egg shape around the body. It's not a perfect sphere. And it's multi-layered. What does the watermelon look like if we cut a slice of it? one big oval with these layers but look in the center here can you see it's all these black seeds what i was shown is everything that exists is a microcosm of the macrocosm like fractal images where you have smaller images representing the larger images we have our own watermelon shape around us, but we're all part of one greater field. Call it the big watermelon. I have to laugh at this, but it, it, it brings it down to basics so we can understand it. Within the oneness, all of us are like the individual seeds here. And yet each of us being a microcosm of the macrocosm is the seed of our own field carrying all of the possibility, all of the potential from the whole in us. We can differentiate ourselves from each other, but we're all part of this one wholeness. So my guides told me, you know, what you experience in your earthly life is one slice of the whole, like a slice in time. So it's just picture slices of the watermelon, but making up one whole, this is how the guides were able to create that magical moment when everything came together. If any of you have studied quantum physics, you understand that everything exists in like this soup of possibilities until observed by consciousness. So when we observe consciousness, the possibilities become physical matter, particles from the wave to the particle. So this slice in time is observed consciousness. When we're not observing consciousness, it's like a blinking on and off. We have all this potential. So the potential for anything to happen is always existent in the oneness and being part of this wholeness, we create slices in time. Isn't that cool? Boy, that is so cool. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. And, you know, Ken Wilber, of course, uh, brings in uh, some of this with his All Quadrants, All Levels, where he's bringing in, uh, he talks about holon, you know, and holographic. And so holon means that you can slice anything, cut, cut it in half and all the way down to proton level. And you still have the whole, you know, which is one of the yeah. things that you're getting to here, Suzanne. And then uh, Greg Braden with his fractal, you know, uh, time, fractal being, and then Nassim Harriman with uh, this whole, uh, that we're all sovereign to one body, you know, which is his whole, which is like saying we are all one, except that it's using science terminology. So it's, it's so beautiful because there are all these intersections now between science and philosophy and spirituality and the, afterlife where it's just all coming together uh and i love that watermelon isn't that cool the aura thing well, see, this you is know what, it's this, like this is what makes me laugh steve because we have the scientists and i used to be very left brain as a navy commander very logical and i'm still logical and left brain but i've found the balance and my team of guides have a lot of humor and they they keep me light and laughing and i'm always full of joy and i know my the members of my earthly team are the same way so i'm laughing because i know from now on we're going to be talking about the big watermelon another name for god it's not sacrilegious it's acknowledging 
the absolute oneness of everything and we're the little seeds and then we create our own little melons here in our own lives. Yeah, I love the way it's bringing in oneness and wholeness in such a beautiful way, this whole story. Uh, isn't it amazing that a watermelon of all things would be the, uh, the takeoff point for this conversation? You know, wow, so cool. By the way, now, see, this is, uh, yeah, the, go the, ahead. The Susan. main point that I want to bring here is that I, I trusted my experience, my personal experience with the higher beings two days ago. I asked for evidence, and this is what I encourage everybody to do so you know you're part of a team. Then I surrendered and had this excited sensation, this sense of wonder. I wonder how it's going to unfold, knowing that it would because we're part of a flow. And then to see how I was led right to that. And it's not a coincidence because of the whole story I told you. That's just one of these no other explanation moments. And then for them to have chosen not something random, but something that so clearly illustrates how and why this happened, the oneness, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it is. And I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to just quickly tell a story that's similar to this, uh, where earlier back in the, uh, in the early summer, you may know in humanities team, of course, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. And uh, so Neil Donald Walsh and I founded the organization 19 years ago in 2003. Now, we're, we launched over the summer an 18-year initiative. It's called Changing Humanity's Future. And it's going back. We're actually bringing in uh, how, you know, God, uh, conversations with God, right? Neil uh, has done these nine conversations with God books. And, and God in the book uh, says this is, let me give you a little clarity. This is kind of what uh, what it looks like now. This is what it looks like in your future. These are steps you can take to get there, you know, but I'm here to empower you not to make you do anything. So, but as we were launching this initiative, we were going to be bringing in, you know, God's name and which, which makes me a little nervous of even, even though it's said over and over and over again in the books. And so I just had this, uh, this, this, uh, like 20 minutes where I was on my knees and I just said, God, you need to give me a beyond the doubt sign mm -hmm. that I am to do this where I'm using your name, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about your vision and your action steps. I need to know. And then I let it go. And that was, uh, that was one morning. Now, the very next day in the afternoon, I'm walking down and I'm just walking out to my kitchen. We've got a nice, beautiful view actually out these uh, windows looking over the Boulder Valley. And I notice there's this white bird, you know, flying really faster than birds fly right toward our house. And I don't see white birds around. So I thought, what the heck is that? You know, and I, so I went outside to look and look where it landed and it landed right at the apex of our roof. And it was a perfect white dove, a perfect oh, white dove. Was. And we actually recorded it. My wife came out and recorded the whole thing. Uh, you know, and it just stood there and looked at me for 30 minutes before it flew away. Wow. And I've never seen Ooh. a perfect white dove in Boulder, you know, in the 19 years I've been here. Uh, so Beautiful. Uh, just uh, Beautiful. this is this is the same thing here where, you know, yeah. where we're doing this pure work where it's about service, you know, where we understand we're part of the one. And we're just asking for signs, for examples, for beyond a doubt, you know, uh, things that happen so that we know they're with clarity uh, about what we're doing uh, in these steps we're taking. Boy, do they come in in a big way or what? They do. And when they happen, because you ask so clearly, you feel it in your heart. There's a knowing, there's a lift, there's a goosebumps like I got when you told your story, Steve. And that's because we are all connected. Yeah. You just, you're, it's the soul saying to you, you ask for it. Here's your answer. Trust us. Trust the flow. Yeah. Just uh, astounding. And, uh, so what a beautiful, well, you know, I haven't even formally introduced, uh, you know, notice that we jumped right into the story. I actually didn't even do the proper introduction. Before I do, let me just share though, partnering with universal beings. So we are, uh, this theme, we, 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 we created a free program actually. Suzanne Giesman and Patricia Coda Robles humanities team, uh, we're, we're launching this brand new free 60 minute program. We're launching it Tuesday next week. So, on, uh, on the 3rd of September and invite you, uh, we'll put on the screen here, partnering with universal beings, 
Uh, if you leave your name and email address, we'll sign you up. Uh, we'll be doing this live program Tuesday next week, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then we'll do it again, an encore, on Saturday the 10th. And Suzanne will be with me live for the encore on the September 10th, Saturday, September 10th. You'll also have opportunities to watch it uh, live right now or schedule it if you can't make these two live programs. So partnering with Universal Beings, just... Uh, Check it out, it's a brand new program. We haven't ever unveiled it. We'll unveil it for the very first time next week. Okay, so let me uh, inter give uh, Suzanne a proper introduction here. Suzanne Giesman is a highly respected spiritual teacher and medium. She has written 13 books on spirituality and life after death, and her transition from senior military officer to her current life is featured in the award-winning documentary, Messages of Hope, based on her own memoir. She is also founder of the Awakened Way teachings and was included on the 2022 Watkins list of the 100 most spiritually influential people on the earth. Wow, is that something? Suzanne has recently partnered with fellow spiritual advisor and guide Patricia Cota Robles to create a brand new online program called Partnering with Universal Beings Discover How to Receive Guidance from Other Dimensions to Improve Your Life and Our World. Uh, so uh, now formally, you know, welcome to the program. Here's Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And I was just thinking about this whole topic of oneness and wholeness because I had followed Patricia's work for well over a decade, had heard of her teaching. Uh, she gets lovely, beautiful, spirit-filled messages from universal beings. And when we met, I, I was really touched by the difference in our styles. I mean, I'm sitting here, I get bubbly and I talk about watermelons and I giggle a lot. And, and Patricia is, is, has a very different energy. I almost feel uh, uh, humbled in her present. It's such a different feeling that I thought, this is interesting that we were paired up and I was shown by my guides, it's perfect because we're both saying the same things yet we use different vocabulary and we have different energy to, to introduce it. And that way we reach people who resonate with different energies. Yeah, no, it's so true, boy. And she is, uh, she's just got a, a different style, uh, but just like you, wow, it's just so many people tune in and, and follow her and work with her because uh, she's so just, uh, uh, just left brain people can, can feel her uh, authority, her responsibility, her accountability. I mean, she takes leadership so seriously, just as you do, Suzanne. So yeah, Humanities team was delighted to be uh, creating this program with them called uh, Partnering with Universal Beings because again, coming back to our 18 year initiative, which is to make conscious living pervasive worldwide, right? So all over the earth in 18 yeah. years by 2040. And part of uh, how we do that is just in this be beautiful stories we were sharing is, there, there is a veil right now that is, is not lifted for, for most people. And, and yet we can lift the veil. You know, oneness is not just what is physicalized, right? There's actually even more uh, on the other side of the veil than what's here physicalized. And they're here to help us. I, I have another, uh, another analogy for you, Steve. It goes back to the water, watermelon, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. The, this, the veil doesn't separate us from one distinct level to another. If we go back to the watermelon, it's just different seeds within the oneness at different frequencies, but all within the same oneness. And it's like the, the flesh of the watermelon is the connective tissue. We can't see the connective tissue between us and those at the different levels now, but it's there. And it, that's the veil. The veil is just a term for the, the apparent separation between us. But I walked out the door this morning here in South Carolina. It's so humid, you can feel the air. But most of the time, you can't. So we think that there's just nothing but space out here between us and the trees and the driveway and the cars. But instead, there is this connective tissue, the energy between us. This morning, I could feel it as physical space, but really there's this whole energetic field that in this case is the flesh of the watermelon holding the seeds together. 
we are completely interconnected with all beings at every level, not separate levels, different frequencies within the one sphere of being. So this is why it's possible for us to learn to connect when we part the veil. That's simply a word for recognizing there's an energetic difference between us and we can fine tune our awareness to part that veil and notice who's right here, right now, all the time, universal beings. Yeah, wow, isn't the watermelon just the most amazing metaphor for life? Yeah, it really you know, is. Because th these are not simple notions to be sharing, you know, a mainstreaming, but it turns out the watermelon, it is. you know, you settled on just yeah, the perfect device to explain all yeah. this, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, let's, let's, let's jump into this question. So for people, some people may ask, uh, so who are these universal beings and why uh, do they want to help humanity evolve? So for people that might be asking that question, Suzanne. They are expressions of God, expression of the one source of the absolute consciousness, just like you are. But they exist in a realm of frequency, a bandwidth that's different from our earthly bandwidth. They have been around a little while. They're more evolved, but they tell us first and foremost, that doesn't make them better than us. Just the fact that they have realize they know more than most of us do here that we are all connected and that where there is no separation we call that love so they express love much better than most humans do our goal is to match them in expressing love the more we can do that at this level the easier it is to connect with that them and it explains why they want to help us because they're trying to help us align with our true nature, which is this connected oneness. Okay, beautiful. So uh, now we've referenced this uh, program, Partnering with Universal Beings. We're gonna now go to a, a, a three minute clip here uh, that's just a part of this 60 minute uh, program that we recently created with Suzanne and Patricia. And then uh, after we go to it and watch it together, we're gonna come back and Suzanne and I are gonna discuss it. So here we go. Right. Suzanne, I'm going to come on over to you here. You you used to, of course, be a naval commander and an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staffs and even flew on Air Force One. But then your whole life shifted to what you do now, helping hundreds of thousands across the world to connect more deeply with universal consciousness and their own soul through your Awakened Way teachings. Can you tell us a little about the higher beings who communicate with you and how you came to make this tremendous detour on your own life path? Yes, indeed, Steve. I would agree with Patricia that there's no hierarchy here, even with those we connect with. They just want us to share the messages of love and connection. And the beings who I communicate with are also beings of light, but so are we here in our bodies. And I actually couldn't tell you their names. Sometimes I'm able to identify a few of them, but the wisdom that comes from them is so clearly beyond anything that I could access that I've come to trust them. And it's my greatest honor to share with others that we all have access to this wisdom because we're all souls. I didn't know this during my naval career. And what I love and what I've been taught by my, my team of light beings is that each of us can reach a specific segment of humanity with our own uh, qualities that we bring to the table. And my left brain background, wearing that uniform for 20 years, seems now to be attracting those who wouldn't normally turn to higher guidance. And I love that. I'm able to reach those who are floundering around a bit like I used to and show them that there is another way to face our day-to-day -day lives. And that's to realize that we are part of something so much greater and that each of us can make a difference in our own way by tuning in to this team of helpers that's available to everyone. I would be lost if I didn't sit each day now and connect. It's so easy to get caught up in the drama. I know that, that so many people who are listening right now know what it's like to feel only human, but connecting with those who have been human and are now 
higher beings show us that we are so much more than just these physical bodies. Beautiful. Wow. So a lot there, Suzanne. Yeah, and that we're so much more than these physical bodies. And bringing in that uh, while they're highly evolved beings and uh, the nature of love and its, its deeper expression uh, that they bring through, but that we're light beings ourselves. So you've got uh, so many important messages in there. Yes, and I hope that it never sounds canned at all to me. Moment by moment, those across the veil are showing us the truth in this. And it's my greatest honor to help other people learn to connect themselves. It's, it's just a matter of understanding how it works and then experiencing for it for yourself and then engaging. Those are the three E's I talk about. Uh, ex educate yourself, experience, and engage. That's the part most people forget to do. Our helpers are right here. All we have to do is learn how to connect, which is just as easy as doing what I did right there, and ask a direct question. And the insights are so helpful. Sometimes they're downright stunning. <laughs> no kidding. Gosh, yeah. And so many examples of stunning have come in here already. So, wow. Um, <laughs> So get ready, viewers, and I know you're watching because you're conscious yourself, and I'm sure probably uh, all of you have had some uh, of this show up in your life, and, and uh, we're talking about it because it's important. If we're going to journey to this functional, sustainable, flourishing planet where uh, we're having these, where we're living consciously and we're doing this collective, you, you, these universal story we're all here together there's all of this beautiful open that that's why we're here yeah they're they're not hiding from us they're waiting for us to do our part to part the veil and like i said that requires us to lift our consciousness to start on earth right Yes, absolutely. And that's so, viewers, there you are. There's your uh, invitation to be angels here on earth, right? This is what is being requested. If we all, we all look out on the world and can see the dysfunction, we don't need to talk about it or the hand wringing. And that's why Suzanne and actually in our household too, we leave the TV off. We don't need, we don't need to see this stuff. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that we don't have a role to play. We have a huge role to play. And uh, we're all being invited in now. Okay, let me go to a question here. We're gonna actually, I'm gonna go to a question and then uh, there is a masterclass that was created that's brand new too. I'll talk about that here in just a moment. We're gonna watch a clip from that. But uh, let me first get to this question from Darlene who says, thank you, Suzanne. What do we do when we continue to try to connect using bless me and other methods when we really uh, believe but can't? I would like to be able to share this with like-minded friends and others, but feel frustrated as I've never connected. So, boy, I bet uh, Darlene's speaking for a lot of people. I know people at start in your classes probably come in with this kind of thing. Right, the bless me method is my, my seven step method for connecting with higher consciousness. What you do is you go back to the basics and simply sit in the silence, building the power. All of these things are what I'm teaching in your masterclass, Steve. It's a process and the very basics is learning to clear out the human conditioning, the clouds that are obliterating the blue sky of your true nature. It's very challenging to connect with higher beings if your sky is cluttered with weather. So by sitting quietly, there are certain practices that you can learn to notice what's arising and then you learn how to clear that out. So it just feels like there's some, some conditioned human thinking, perhaps some, some energy that needs to be cleared before you'll start to feel that actual connection. It's a process and it could take years. People don't wanna hear that. They want instant connection. But I started down this path when my stepdaughter was killed in 2006. And I somehow knew if I wanted to connect with her spirit, if it really existed, which I discovered it sure does, she sure exists now, still as part of our lives, as do all of your loved ones who have passed. 
then I needed to sit quietly every day. My initial goal was to connect with Susan. That's all I wanted. Let me connect with my stepdaughter. And that did not happen for years, Steve. But what did happen was I started to experience more peace. I started to know things that I had no way of knowing as my psychic abilities that were latent. All of us have them because we're souls started to arise with the dedicated commitment to just noticing the silence, watching what arises with no other expectation than I want to connect with Susan. All these other gifts came up. So uh, you may be asking for too much too fast. Don't get discouraged. No matter how long it takes, there are gifts along the way. Yeah, boy, thank you for that. That is, is beautiful because you really frame that it, this isn't an instant, uh, for, actually for some very, very gifted, they can come into it quite quickly. But uh, in your class, you teach about the bell curve, you know, and this is kind of the percentages and how it works. And for most people, uh, right on target, you know, that there is peace and these things uh, as that precede this. So thank you for going through that because I suspect that uh, uh, she was speaking for many, many people. Okay, let's go take a, a quick look at this clip now from there's a, there's a masterclass that follows the free program, Partnering with Universal Beings. Uh, the masterclass is, is awesome. It's called Cosmic Forces Creating a Whole New Future. So, and this is with Suzanne Eastman and Patricia Cota Robles, where she gets into that uh, process that uh, she just described. It's part of the, the uh, that be blessing or blessing me uh, process. So let's go take a look at it. We're going to come back and talk about it. And then we've got questions just flying in, so we're going to get to lots more questions. Here we go. The problem facing most of us these days, the problems you see in the world are that most humans think we're only human and nothing could be farther from the truth. We feel like we're separate, we're alone, it's us against them. This kind of separation, this is the illusion that causes discord and disharmony. I'm here today to teach you how to find harmony and how to thrive by understanding your fundamental nature is wholeness. Nobody tells us that. Most people walk around feeling they're broken, that there's something wrong with them. I know we can all identify with that feeling, but what a blessing it is when you come to know you are not broken at your fundamental level. There is nothing wrong with you beyond the human story. Anything that tells you otherwise is simply what I call BS, and that stands for belief system. What did you think it meant? <laughs> I spent my entire career as a Navy officer. I rose to the rank of commander and had the honor of serving as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff's aide-de-camp, his right-hand man, so to speak. Throughout my Navy career, I had no idea there's a greater reality. I had no idea that there are cosmic forces, actual sentient beings we can call upon to give us insight, to help us know we're not alone, to show us we are part of one interconnected web of being. Being a state of wholeness is your fundamental nature. Think about it. What's the one thing you are aware of? Awareness itself. You exist and you know it. That in itself cannot be divided. Awareness is indivisible. The field from which all of your experiences arise in a human body is unified, completely whole, and all of us share this field. Each of us is here in human form to experience our unique story and how it plays out. But they all arise from a field beyond any story. So the goal on this journey of coming to understand the cosmic forces that unite us all is coming to know yourself beyond the story. Okay, so much uh, clarity and wisdom there in that clip. Uh, 
So that was just a teeny little clip from this brand new uh, eight week masterclass today. We haven't, this, we've ever, actually never talked about this program before. This is the very first time we've talked about it. Uh, it's called Cosmic Forces Creating a Whole New Future. So Suzanne Giesman, Patricia Cota Robles, Humanities team will uh, formally announce this next Tuesday when we show the partnering uh, with Universal Beings program, the free program. This is for people that want to go deeper and really go down into this whole process of partnering with Universal Beings and having this wisdom come in, this guidance, this support for us on our uh, conscious journey, and just where we fully uh, embody and express all the invitations in life when we're getting to a lot of those things here during this program. So let me just say, um, now, Humanities Team, for, for people that don't know, we are uh, in the transformational education industry. We are the only one, uh, the, 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 we're the largest uh, nonprofit in the transformational education industry, and actually the only one that is spanning the globe right now with the bigger uh, for-profits. Uh, we have this uh, revolutionary conscious streaming platform. It's called Humanity Stream Plus. Uh, and it is one of a kind in the industry. We're the only one that has this true streaming platform. It's got all of these incredible master classes. So uh, Suzanne and Patricia join Michael Bernard Beckwith and Neil Donald Walsh and uh, Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton and Lynn McTaggart and, and many others, Nassim Harriman, uh, that have their just beautiful, powerful master classes on the, on the platform. Now, as a nonprofit, we're doing something a little different. We're not trying to uh, create revenue growth and profit growth. So we're a nonprofit, so we go the other way. We're trying to reduce price, reduce price, and reduce price again. Why? Because as a nonprofit, our mission is to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040. Our dream, our vision, our goal is for this to be, this platform to be in every home uh, where, there in, where every major language is translated throughout the planet. So, and candidly, this is how, when people say, well, how in the world do you plan to make conscious living pervasive in 18 years? What the heck is your strategy? Well, here it is. Here's a strategy where you create these unbelievable masterclasses. You know, you've, we've all heard this saying, there are a thousand paths to the mountaintop. This is one of the paths. Uh, the mountaintop is the same, where we're in wholeness, we're in oneness, where we're, uh, we're, we're, the, the afterlife is revealed fully to us. The, the, the mountaintop is the same, but there are many, many different paths to that mountaintop. And we're uh, identifying what we believe are the, the best practices to getting to that mountaintop. Uh, this program is one of them. And I'll just share that Suzanne has 62 programs right now on the Humanity Stream Plus platform. How do I know? Uh, you'll see right there at the top, it says search. There's a search function right there in navigation at the top. You uh, enter Suzanne Giesman's name and it'll say 62 programs. So, uh, and this is the price of it is it's about a dollar a day. It's uh, $3.99 a year. Uh, so for these hundreds of master classes, and when you buy an individual master class these days, you know, the price varies anywhere from 97 to about uh, seven or $800. So it's kind of right there in the middle. Uh, and yet you get hundreds of master classes instead of one in 62 programs from Suzanne. So um, check out Humanity Stream. Plus also I'll just share, we do have a one for one program. So when you buy this for yourself, we gift it to an underserved, underprivileged individual that could not afford this platform at any price. Uh, so uh, the one for one program is really important for us and maybe makes you feel good too because you're kind of a bringer of the light in the sense that you're uh, you're, you're bringing this to somebody who couldn't afford it when you subscribe. Okay, so I want to come back here to uh, Suzanne here. Boy, um, so many things we've opened up. Um, let me get to just some more questions here though, Suzanne. Um, so Linda, who's in this green room with us, uh, she's a, a, one of the Stream Plus members. She says, within the veil, how do we best navigate, deal with the ones who are toxic? It's not easy to accept them. Okay, so. Yes, my guides just last week gave me, the, or maybe two weeks ago, I've been working with it ever since, a beautiful new acronym using the word FLOW. And it is feeling, loving, open, wholeness. You look at those others and instead of resisting them, you say, wow, even that, even their behavior, as much as it doesn't resonate with me, is part of the wholeness. 
and you recognize that that's just part of their limited story and that it, if they understood were part of one flow, they would raise their consciousness and not be like that, not be so experienced as toxic. So we can say, oh, they're toxic and push them away. And then we're just buying into the separation. But to feel loving, open wholeness means I may not condone what you're doing or saying. I may not resonate with it. But I recognize that at this limited human level, we are part of the wholeness. So now I can send you love from that awareness. And maybe that will help raise you up to a higher level as well. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that, Suzanne. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, there's one here. Just the screen moved around a little. Okay. So uh, Johanna says, I have moments like this, the watermelon, all the time. But I usually just brush these off as random thoughts. So are you saying that they aren't really random? That if not, how do I proceed with a random thought? Uh, who should think a watermelon could bring such information? I'm thrilled with possibility. This is the benefit of sitting daily, if only for a few minutes. My sip of the divine, which I teach in the class and is also on YouTube, is a beautiful three-minute practice. Anybody can carve out three minutes a day to, to sit in the stillness, listen to the silence, and notice what arises. That's when you start to see what's really random. But when you ask one specific question a day, then you start to feel the difference between the random thoughts and direct answers to a specific question directly given to a higher being. In the case of the watermelon, I specifically asked for a sign and in that pause knew what I needed would be given. So it sounds and feels random, but when you do this practice repeatedly, you know there's a gift in it. You don't deliberately look for it. When it comes though, you know that's it, and you can open that up even more and say, is there a further gift in this? What else does this have to teach me? Yeah, beautiful, and meditation is so important, and probably like a lot of the viewers, you know, I do um, at night, um, and even walking around during the day, because I, I maintain quiet around me, um, I get a lot that would come to people during meditation, but where I also create that concentrated time and go out and sit on my porch in nature yes. uh, and ask, yes. you know, how may I serve? How may I, you know, there are all of these things we're, we're doing. Uh, boy, the way that concentrated comes in where you can just feel the energy of this is what, you know, this is how, this is right. where. Uh, so right. this is, and, and it I know doesn't, you. It doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be meditation, Steve. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's just uh, this morning in bed, I could tell my husband wasn't quite ready to wake up. He's dozing and I didn't want to get up and disturb him. So I just spent that time contemplating higher thoughts, connecting with my guides, just lying there in those peaceful moments. My husband doesn't meditate, but he loves to walk in the woods. That's his meditation time. So it's a focused time of connection. It serves the same purpose, except when you really want to have those good, clear conversations, we really need to create a practice that allows us to shift, completely part the veil and make a really good connection. Yeah, nice, right. Yeah, we can create our own environment right in bed. We don't wanna wake up our partner, so good. Um, okay, so now um, uh, ProShot brings in, I'd like to contribute to changing humanity's future by offering what I am here to do, wondering who I, whom I can reach out to in this regard. So ProShot, wonderful. Uh, and if you go to changinghumanitiesfuture.org, that'll bring you right to the place on, on our humanities team uh, site where you can actually sign up, you can uh, share, you want to offer your talent, your skill for something. Uh, so boy, we'd love to have you come in and other viewers that uh, want to be part of this larger 18-year initiative, changinghumanitiesfuture.org. Uh, go read about the initiative, and if it resonates with you, uh, sign up. Uh, the only way, by the way, as you know, that we change humanity's future, we all do it together, right? It's a big, huge level playing field called the earth where we're all just stepping into the fullness of uh, our possibility and the invitation really in life. So there we go. Yeah, we're all going to be a watermelon seed. 
Nice. The one big watermelon. <laughs> That's right. One big watermelon. Steve, I just have uh, to say, every time I interact with you, Steve, and you repeat what you're all about and the plan for 2040, it fills me with so much hope because you, you, you really get it. It's clear, you know, you have to charge something because you have people doing this good work, you have expenses, and yet you make it reasonable. It's affordable and yet everybody gets so much and everybody involved is doing this for the right reasons. And I love that. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're such a, you know, uh, clearly your lifetime was, a, this is a mission for you, uh, the life that you're living, uh, which is, is how it feels to us. And, uh, you know, as, as we know, there's all of the hand wringing going on everywhere. So where we can step out of that, you know, and just be, step into the healing, the alchemy, you know, the light, yes. you know, we're light beings and just play yes. the role that we're supposed to play. Our lives, first of all, it's anything but sacrifice. You know, our lives are so full, you know, true prosperity yeah. comes to us. And then, you know, in the process where we're collecting with others all over the world doing this, guess what? We create this whole, this planet that, that every parent wants to create, right? For this next generation and generations to come. So yeah, let's uh, join yeah. together. Suzanne's an amazing partner in this. Uh, and by the way, she's a, a, a keynote, maybe the lead keynote at the IONS conference in Salt Lake City here that starts this weekend. So if you're around Salt Lake City, go uh, go check her out there. Yeah. yeah but it's also live there. stream, Steve. It's yeah, live stream, right. it's so live anybody stream can join in. Really, yeah. IONS is the International Association of Near-Death Studies. When I tell people the three E's, every time I talk about ex uh, educate yourself, I say, Learn about people who've had near-death experiences. Learn from their stories. They've crossed the veil. They've experienced our true home. And it's just going to be full of that this weekend. I can't wait to be surrounded by that, that energy. Yeah, no kidding. I, uh, boy, you're going to have a blast. I'm in Boulder. so And I've got uh, two, two teens and, and my wife. So probably aren't going to. I don't have an RV. But uh, like you say, you can live stream it. So. Wow, check that out for, uh, and maybe many of you are, because I know there's a big crowd here uh, with uh, Suzanne. Okay, so this question comes in from Liz. She says, well, Suzanne, Steve, I, you're... if I could, I think, if I could, yeah. is if they go to my home, my website on my homepage, right under the banner, a little bit down from that, there's a little uh, thumbnail with more information about that. Oh, good. Okay, SuzanneGeesman.com or .org? Uh, yeah. Yes, .com. Yeah, mm -hmm. .com, SuzanneGeesman.com. Okay, good. Uh, so... So Liz says, Suzanne, are your guides uh, departed souls who are in between incarnations? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tuning into my guides right now because they said that there's a misperception here that the soul is never in between incarnations. The soul is always experiencing incarnations and is still a soul. Do you get that huge difference there? Your soul didn't stop being a soul now that you're being you. So the soul is always here. And so my guides to answer your question, how some of them have previously been in human form, but they're not coming back around again. <laughs> They've yeah. gone on to the next level. They learned it all. They are the most loving beings and they're helping us from the higher levels. Yeah, beautiful. Um, okay, so now Vanessa, she's in the green room here. Uh, and she says, please tell us when and why you stopped watching TV. So you want to uh, address oh. that one, Suzanne? It just, uh, there are two reasons. Number one, I stopped because I couldn't find enough that was worth the short period of time that we have in this life to make it worthwhile to sit there. I would rather find books that I enjoyed. And then I just simply ran out of time with this work. It's taken over my life and I have so many projects and balls I'm juggling at any one time. And when I need to relax, I find a book or play my gongs or just, just sit and enjoy time, quiet time with my husband, but I just find uh, TV is, it, I don't resonate with most of the things that are on there these days. And the news, forget it. I read the headlines so that I'm up to date on what's happening, but uh, it's, they sell news because they only bring you the negativity. And it's, when we get a little more balance, maybe I'll watch it. But for now, I prefer talking to my team in spirit. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. I do the same things you do, Suzanne. You know, and they say if it bleeds, yeah. it leads. It's, it's the current state of media. So, uh, but um, 
boy, you know, we are in this lifetime, there's some beautiful things we can do. and We want to make time for those beautiful things. So, um, okay, so here's um, some things that came through. First, let's see, I want to find the, uh, this one. Oh, okay, yeah, here it is. So this is uh, Kelly. She says, I was going through a really tough time a few years back. I was in my car at a stoplight, and out loud I asked God for a sign that everything would work out. Now I live in Colorado, and suddenly a large, exotic, colorful bird landed on my car. <laughs> I exhaled wow. and knew all would be fine. So here we, Kelly, thank you for sharing that. So we were all bringing in our stories. You know, we probably all have had these stories. I mean, these, what sometimes they're called beyond a doubt uh, things that we request. Boy, can they come through just in the most amazing way if you just can't even question it. So uh, again, Kelly, thanks for bringing that in. Now, um, Okay, Erin says this. She says, my brother died and then uh, sent me bold messages. I didn't even know about connecting with him before he contacted me. Are some beings oh, in the past strong enough to do that? And, when they, and then they open us up to this experience is a question. Oh, absolutely. I just spoke last weekend at the Helping Parents Heal Conference, 900 Shining Light Parents. That's a parent who has a child across the veil. You wouldn't believe how uplifting it was, Steve, because we all had been to the depths of despair and, and now know that those who pass are still with us. And let me tell you, absolutely, your loved ones who pass can show you signs even before they connect in dreams or communicate through meditation. They're just ingenious ways of letting us know they're around. And again, they're what I call NOEs, no other explanation moments through the timing, but most of all, through that knowing in your heart, oh my gosh, that's my loved one. Yeah, nice. Uh, NOEs, knowing there are, there's no other explanation. No, no other that's, that's, explanation. Right, right. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, uh, Kelly says, uh, I've been hearing random pop sounds or clicks when I meditate or when I'm just sitting. Is this a sign of spirit presence? It could be, or it could just be that you're generating and being aware of higher energy moving through your field than you're used to. It could just be energy effects. So what you do is you go to your heart, you shift your focus higher, and you ask if this is the, the signature of somebody who's trying to get my attention, talk to me, show me who you are, what do I need to know? So engage. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So, and I told you this hour is going to go fast. We're down to less than two minutes. So... Um, hey, just wow. uh, viewers, thank you. Wow, this was, we had questions pouring in here. Um, actually, uh, Marie even has a statement. She says, it's all about paying attention. Messages are out there. Nothing happens by accident. So Marie, so true. Thank you for bringing that in. We had a lot of audience participation. So thank you all for uh, being here with us during the hour. And, you know, again, um, what, what uh, Suzanne and Patricia are endeavoring to do is to, they're, they're sharing, you know, they're not special. It's not like they were put on some hierarchical thing, stool. Uh, the, the whole thing is, is they want to teach you uh, to, to find these, to, to, re, to, to, it was like learn to play a piano, you know, to teach you to do these things so that on the planet, it's a normal thing of, of course, you know, I talk across the veil. What would be unique about that? Uh, that that there'll right. be a day where this is how it works. Uh, we're on a journey to that day. So we're inviting you to start out by just partnering with Universal Beings, this free program. Check that out because it's an hour long. It's free. And some of you may then want to go through the master class where you really want to learn it. Uh, but, uh, but certainly check out the free program so you can, you can sponge up this incredible wisdom of uh, Suzanne's and Patricia's uh, partnering with Universal Beings. Really excited about this program that we're just launching and showing it for the very first time on Tuesday, September 6th next week. So, um, and then I'll be with you on the 10th. Yes. And then Suzanne will be with us for the encore on Saturday, the 10th. Okay. That starts at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern time on Saturday, September 10th. So put that one on your calendar because uh, she'll be coming on live to answer your questions. That'll be the only the second unveiling of this uh, program. So join us. I'll be with uh, Suzanne on the 10th. Looking forward to that. Suzanne, have a blast with IONS, you know, the near-death experience crowd oh, here will. in Salt Lake City. I know you will. Yeah, yeah. I will. And, I'll, um, be telling, I'll be sharing lots of NOEs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll bet. So, 
uh, and you can live stream, you know, if you can't be there in Salt Lake City. So go to SuzanneGiesman.com uh, and you can get details on that. So, and viewers, thanks for being with us. Uh, wow, an amazing program. Next week, I'm gonna be with Christy Whitman, who also is a very gifted uh, a medium, uh, among other things, does energy work and things too, Christy Whitman. So, and at the same time, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. So uh, join us um, and thank you to viewers. And then we're gonna pull the camera back. I wanna thank uh, Jim Gray, who is my colleague, my partner here. Uh, so we're in the studio, here's me on the couch. That's uh, Jim over there. Uh, at the controls, so he's the guy that uh, made this whole program happen for Suzanne and I. Thank you, Jim Gray. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, Karen Gordon, uh, Nanette Kennedy, D. Meyer, Garth Catterall. I've got lots of partners and colleagues that make this possible. Uh, so thank you to all of uh, you. And also, uh, by the way, Suzanne has some beautiful assistants too, who uh, we've been working with on these programs. So shout out to I you sure all. Do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, okay, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of week. Uh, and we'll be seeing you on uh, Wednesday next week, same time, same place. Have a fabulous week. You know, love to all of you. <laughs> Peace and blessings.